is a jewel good morning mario and good morning switch fans day four of the 5 a.m nintendo twitter wake up and they didn't do anything today what is going on with nintendo we got to discuss their strange behavior today and we have to discuss them acquiring a really important company that could dramatically change things for Nintendo. They made an acquisition, they're buying. Everybody else is kind of in holding. Nintendo will be buying. And then we also have a mysterious case of the fake soundtrack. Plus, where the heck is Mario Kart? What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you're doing fantastic. I woke up at the crack of dawn and Nintendo cracked open nothing. And let me know what you think and, and what you predict is going on, because I want to start here. So it was a pretty substantial week thus far, announcing Bayonetta 3's release date. That was pretty darn nifty. And then Kirby's Dream Buffet, out of nowhere, this new eShop-only Kirby game for later this summer. But the two things that everyone thought would be announced this week, the two things that we're definitely waiting for, A, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Course Booster Pass number 2, and B, the next Pokemon trailer where all of these leaks just keep erupting like a garbage disposal that swallowed something really noxious, they're nowhere to be found. Now, Mario Kart may be the weirdest one because we've had indication that this is coming based on A, they announced a Mario Kart 8 tournament for next weekend, B, there's a 7-Eleven ad over in Japan that displays Mario Kart Wave 1 and says do not display after July 17th. So people thought for sure Wave 2 would be out by July 17th, and and I guess it's still could, tomorrow, like a Friday announcement. Nintendo typically doesn't utilize Fridays unless they're gonna, I don't know, break pattern. They're clearly breaking pattern, okay? We should have already had a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet update by now based on past games. We should definitely have Mario Kart DLC if they wanna spread these packs out by the end of 2023 in an even fashion. But I was telling editor Gabe this morning, Nintendo sometimes doesn't do nothing orderly what if they're like okay we're gonna release you know five next year one this year they could mix it all up i still think mario kart is coming but do note that next week is live alive's release and then the week after that is xenoblade chronicles 3 so nintendo might be done for july uh, their strange cadence their behavior is just baffling because it's you know they didn't want to do a june direct they did a partner showcase they're doing some july announcements but they're spreading them out in weird ways. Like there was a Splatoon OLED last week, Bayonetta and Kirby this week. I mean, I guess they could do Mario next week, but what I'm trying to say here is Nintendo, Dougie Bowser, President Furukawa, I can't keep waking up at 5 a.m. This is the burden and the price I pay for loving Nintendo and for moving to the West Coast because Pacific time just sucks for these morning announcements. 9 a.m. on Twitter, sounds great for you East Coasters, but 6 a.m. on Twitter sucks for me. I will keep soldiering on though, because where is Mario Kart? I, I still think Mario Kart is going to come, but maybe it is pushed to the beginning of August. I don't know why they would wait, but you know, they do have two first party published releases coming in the next two weeks, and maybe they don't want to step on those toes. Although a Monday announcement doesn't really crush Live Alive, I don't think, but it coming out the same week sort of seems a bit like sabotage for the game. And I don't, I think Xenoblade Chronicles 3 will definitely have its own week, so let me know what you think's going on. Pokemon, on the other hand, they operate completely independently. They could do things whenever. They could pop tomorrow, they could pop next Wednesday, they could pop the same day as Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I really don't think they, they give a crap. Game Freak just freaks. They just, they freak on Nintendo. They do what they please, and we need to see that giant flamingo Pokemon, please. Whatever this gimmick is, the crystallization, the evolved forms, the starters, the gym leader supposedly not being scaling to the open world level mechanics. Like, what is happening? Please tell us straight from the source. The leaks have been, just like I said, coming a ton. But I want to see what's really going on. My prediction, my best guess, I do think Mario Kart still happens within the next week. Pokemon, maybe that happens. In the Basically, here's my prediction. I'll be getting up and being very tired and uh, needing to go to bed very early. You know who else needs to go to bed? These freaking fakers. Apparently, people are taking rare Nintendo soundtracks from yesteryear, faking them, creating counterfeit copies, and then jacking the price way up. This was spotted by VGC, Video Games Chronicle. Apparently, people are taking soundtracks from Banjo-Kazooie, Mario 64, and other beloved Nintendo nostalgic classics, and they are making counterfeit soundtracks 
This person in the UK is like selling them to sellers in Japan and then they're buying them and flipping them for 10 times the price. We're talking a $200, $300 counterfeit soundtrack and people have purchased these and verified that the official soundtrack and the counterfeit have different covers slightly, different backs slightly, and different discs slightly. Like the coloring, the print quality, it's just a bit off. Now, Nintendo and music have been kind of butting heads all year because Nintendo has been shutting down music YouTubes. Like, they're just very strange with their IP. And I hope that they learn as they release the Mario movie, they move more and more into theme park development, that, hey, it's good to have your stuff out there. Put out these soundtracks for people. I don't know, make a Nintendo music YouTube channel. Uh, start a... A Kickstarter. I don't know. Do whatever you got to do, Nintendo, but stop this from happening. We don't want people spending $300 on the freaking Briegel soundtrack, and it's not even real. The Super Mario 64 soundtrack, that race up to King bob -Om's Mountain with the Koopa, I want to hear that sound, but I don't want to pay $300 for it. So be careful out there if you're in the market for a soundtrack from N64. Please be careful. Let's just add it to the expansion pack, right? Hey, alongside our once a month the Nintendo N64 release, we also have a Nintendo soundtrack release. That would be pretty nifty. Your Switch becomes the iPod of the uh, 21st and a half quarter century. Now then, let's talk about Nintendo gobbling them up. They are buying somebody Kirby style. They've sucked them in to their system and it's actually pretty interesting. This could have a, a significant impact on Nintendo games going forward and we'll have to see what they do, but like, I like what they're seemingly trying to do here. So Nintendo has acquired Dynamo Pictures. Now Dynamo Pictures sounds like an indie film studio, but they're not really a production company. Okay, they've worked on a ton of different things, visual effects, CG, motion capture. They've helped on games like Metroid Other M, Death Stranding, and they're responsible for the Pikmin shorts that aired on Twitter a while back. Now the Pikmin shorts were cute little CG minis about Nintendo IP, and it sounds like they're gonna continue working for Nintendo IP to expand. It says Nintendo has decided to acquire 100% of the outstanding shares of Dynamo Pictures and make it a wholly owned subsidiary to strengthen the planning and production structure of visual content in the Nintendo group. They're renaming the company Nintendo Pictures, which again sounds like a company that would make, division that would make like Netflix shows or something, rip to the Zelda Netflix show that never was. That would be cool, but also based on their work with games and based on the fact that they are more kind of doing like CG mocap, that kind of stuff for games. And we've seen examples of it. They could do stuff like the Pikmin shorts, but they also could do improved cutscenes. Now Nintendo, they're okay with cutscenes, but many of their games aren't really story driven. So outside of something like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, cutscenes don't get a lot of shine. Although when they do, we love them. Like think about even Mario Tennis Aces. That has great opening cutscenes featuring the Mario characters. And usually there's not a lot of cutscenes, but they're pretty hot. So if Nintendo can bring in Dynamo Pictures, now Nintendo Pictures, and have them assist on building out, fleshing out more cutscenes, more animated CG visuals for the IP, that sounds great. I'd love to see Mario Odyssey 2 feature a more in-depth storyline and more cutscenes and have it be a bigger production. And this sort of lines up with them moving into the movie space. They may want to take their characters and do shorts on the internet, do TV type shows, do segments or commercials. Really, this could be anything. It is obviously a big part of their forward plans because they straight up bought this company. It's not a deal. It's not like, oh, they're contracting. No, they bought them. This is now Nintendo Pictures. And I mean, maybe they'll make some, maybe they'll make some super sweet stuff. Maybe they will find a way to expand what Nintendo already does and just improve upon it. And that's tempting, especially with, you know, the, the thought that maybe Nintendo one day will give us a 4K system. They now have somebody who is much more uh, maybe adept at working with that and building out visual effects that can really shine. And I think that would be cool. Whether this is for shorts like the Pikmin shorts, cool. Whether this is for game cutscenes, cool. Whether this is for unforeseen shows, movies, something of the sort, great. Hopefully Nintendo puts these people to good use and hopefully they create some really awesome stuff with Nintendo IP. I think it's just really nice to see Nintendo wanting to branch into more areas and try to expand what they do. They're really good at what they do, but they need to sort of make partnerships, acquisitions to, to build out. Like they work with Illumination to make the movie. They work with Universal Studios to make the theme park. They work with Dynamo Pictures to make better cutscenes. Let me know what you'd like to see Nintendo Pictures tackle. Better cutscenes, your Nintendo games need that. Better TV short series, things of that sort. Would you like to see that? I think cutscenes would be the way to go. I'd love to see Nintendo games sort of 
begin to approach more of that like single player storytelling that kind of like the thing sony does so well obviously not the same but like having their games have a little bit more oomph in that department would be really nifty and and hey people like monolith soft have found great ways to make those cutscenes shine on switch so even with our current hardware you get a company that knows what they're doing in there you get some hands on deck man we could make a beautiful pirate ship we could sail this thing straight into a really lovely Mario Odyssey 2, Mario Odyssey 3, Breath of the Wild 3, whatever they want to make it. Metroid Prime 4 with dope cutscenes from Dynamo Pictures, now Nintendo Pictures. That's my prediction. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Okay, so uh, it's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. I will check again, but I'll keep you posted, and we'll find out when Nintendo is going to drop Mario Kart Pokemon any freaking day. Now, let me know what you think happens first. Mario Kart, Pokemon trailer, or are they just like saving both of them i mean the september direct is now in question because nintendo is just being so weird their lineup is in question what's all going on total question somebody needs to figure out and do a report like a book report remember like fifth grade book reports you're like man i really i did one on alan iverson i remember that that was a good book report we need to do a book report on Nintendo and figure out what the heck is going on. But in the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. I love you a lot. And until next time, much, much respect for you guys being a part of my freaking friend core family here on Switch Force. And until next time, thanks again. Switch Force, out.